Welcome to our series, Converse, talking with noted experts in the food and beverage world about how the current pandemic impacts these valued institutions. This is a joint venture of WinelineRadio.com, WinelineTV.com, and GoWine.com. This is your host, Robert Scott, and today I am speaking with David Fuhrer. David is a wine educator, consultant, and journalist. His writings and interviews appear in U.S., French, and U.K. media outlets. David, how are you today? I am suffering in a very variable uh, Hudson Valley. Um, and I've, I've taken a lot of heed to what's going on you know, far south of me in the big city, of course. Uh, Absolutely. Because New York City, of course, has uh, you know, become quickly the epicenter. Uh, it's the second time as ground zero for uh, a crisis situation in recent years. And uh, what came to me interestingly today, and I've been in contact before I'm prefacing what I'm going to go into a little bit here by saying that I have been in contact uh, with a handful of West Coast uh, winery owners and makers. And um, their main issue, you know, is at this point of their work, you know, in the vineyard, um, they, they're fine in terms of, you know, getting their, you know, the bottlings uh, up and going, their people working on, on, the, on, the, on the bottling line and, and the wineries themselves and, and, the, and, the, and the, so we say the manufacturing side of this agricultural product. But in the vineyards, fortunately, so far, the pressure that's being placed upon labor um, for businesses and, of course, with the uh, our federal government's uh, problems with regarding uh, guest workers and such um, – the pressure on labor is not being felt yet because much of the work at this point is, it seems to be mechanically based. However, as we get farther down the vegetative cycle, that's going to put some labor issues, uh, problems, uh, stronger coming into focus for, for vintners. Um, now going into what's happening in, in terms, and, and this is a labor issue. And of course it's going to come, uh, as a point uh, to talk about what's happening as far as, as wine retailing, uh, that the general public is paying attention to now as well. Uh, so we have, it's interesting, there was a headline in today's New York Times with New Yorkers, you know, ordered to stay inside, unlike a great many places in the U.S., New York City is really under lockdown in many respects. Absolutely. Um, and the headline, headline reads, New Yorkers want cheap wine and lots of it, which reflects other reports I've been hearing uh, through the trades. And uh, this is kind of a real narrow focus, but uh, the Times reporter uh, went and just dived down into several Upper East Side uh, liquor stores within a 10-block radius. And uh, I'll just rattle off about a bunch of what I've heard here. Uh, I've excised what I thought was interesting and is, is relevant on a universal basis. So basically, customers who enter a shop called Dr. Wine are required to do so two at a time, six feet apart. And for those waiting outside, there's a sign posted in the window saying, please stand here to maintain social distancing. Now, that particular shop has recorded a 70% increase in sales compared to the same time last year. Um, and, the, and the report from there says that people are buying more than what they need. A little bit of panic response, of course. Sure. They're afraid they're going to close. Uh, <laughs> but one thing that's reflective of this, and it's going to be echoed in other uh, places here that I've, I've touched upon, is that deliveries have shot up. Uh, for this one particular outlet, Dr. Wine, from 70 a day to 20. And what's happening here is that they're, they're, because they're ill-prepared <clears throat> to, you know, uh, to do so and they're not responding rapidly enough, there's a lot of uh, deliveries being done on foot by people already on staff, which is putting pressures, even further pressures, on the staff there, because they, uh, which, and I don't understand why, but they've cut down on their staff rather than increase it. You would think with an increase, a palpable increase in sales, they would try to find people to work temporarily, even on a cash basis, just to fulfill the needs of their customers and not disappoint them. Um, another operation is, for example, and I've, I've encountered this where I live in Hudson Valley, uh, that cash is being, the use of cash is being deferred in favor of plastic, that credit card and debit card payments for purchases are in favor of that, um, in thereby minimizing the amount of material people come in contact with in the transactions. At McCabe's Wines and Spirits, employees are using gloves to open and close the shop doors and to handle the plastic that customers are handing over. As well, they've, they've noted an increase of, um, of sales as well. People are buying more 
they say a bottle. Excuse me, they're buying a case or cases instead of the bottle. Right, right. Uh, and that was echoed by the very uh, high-profile Sherry Lehman, which is also located there in the UES, mm -hmm. the Upper East Side. Uh, and the general manager there indicated that customers are buying more but spending less. And this is at Sherry Lehman. That's a really high-profile place, right? The, sure. the, the rich and the famous uh, tend to shop there. And so they saw a 20% increase in the month of March over the same uh, month last year. But that's just... Uh, but that's just in volume sales. Revenue is down, though, uh, and they're saying this also happened in 2008 during the economic recession, uh, which hit New York, of course, so hard as it did all, all, all of us. Interestingly, though, as far as luxury items go, and this is something that uh, can't be quantified at this point on a broader basis, but champagne, they say, has taken the biggest hit, and they're used, used to selling <clears throat> on normal times outside the holiday season, 35 cases daily, which has dropped five cases a day, which is a significant uh, decrease wow. in skin sh sh yeah, champagne sales. Um, so in, in contrast to the other operation that hasn't responded uh, in a timely fashion by increasing their delivery staff, a place called Whiskey and Wine has. They've increased their delivery staff to account for um, their massive increase in the need for deliveries. And then people are buying more cheaper and more commercial stuff the owner is quoted as saying rather than spending thirty dollars they're spending twelve dollars a bottle um and as well uh <laughs> on a positive on a real positive note is that uh, people are buying gifts for their friends this way and right. so the, the man is quoted as saying i reckon now about 15 bottles a day uh with cards addressed for the stay-at-home orders people are sending them to make sending them to others to make their friends and colleagues feel better uh <laughs> so that's gifting is, is happening in the big city. Yeah, it's so interesting. Really interesting. Uh, excuse me. It's, it's interesting to note uh, that uh, a wine uh, merchant that uh, I deal with uh, quite often in uh, New Jersey has had to cut down their online ordering to a couple of days a week because the demand has been so high and they just can't physically handle it. It's, you know, yeah, you, it's understandable for small operators to be ill-prepared for this sort of thing. You know, they're, they're, their resources are limited and their investment capital to get people on board to help them out as well. However, it, there's been, there's been uh, I'm not going to give any names, but there's, there's been some reports of uh, websites crashing uh, for, as we say, big-name operators who uh, are unable, their, their traffic, unable to handle their increased traffic. Um, for people checking in, you know, where can I get my famous name Merlot? Where can I get my famous name Sparkling Wine? That sort of thing. Um, in a report that's been issued by the National Association of Wine Retailers, that is a group that looks after the interests of small retailers around the U.S., uh, they did a survey of their membership, um, and this just came through, that the traffic has increased for about 65% of the respondents, how much they're not saying, uh, with 25% reporting the increase as significant. Now, Looking to the future, if this sort of trend continues, this ordering habits continue, it's going to force retailers to put more uh, time and resources to developing their internet presence and their responses to it. Now, and that, that's a very verifiable concern. However, coming into conflict with this is the need, the human need for socialization, conflicting with that of risk avoidance. That is. We have, <laughs> when this all settles down, at some point it will. Crises don't last forever. Exactly. Things change in time. And there's a need for socialization that is, is, that is embedded in, in humans on various levels and various percentages, which conflicts with our risk avoidance, uh, uh, and, uh, our need to avoid getting injured. And this is a very nuanced, complicated sort of thing. And it can't be easily measured. This is more for sociologists to consume, consider. But how this can affect the alcohol beverage industry is going to be very, very um, complicated. Yes, when this all goes down and things relax, people are going to be hitting the bars and the pubs, no question, and there'll be a drop off on the retail. Sure, but how that happens in the long run, uh, as, as people we get into whatever constitutes a new normal, remains anybody's guess. So another thing that's been reported in this uh, national that's uh, wine retailer association. Uh, Report is that half of the respondents are experiencing moderate or significant delays in delivery, with common with uh, the 
with you know working with common carriers like you know, FedEx or UPS. Sure. Now, with a sudden with a sudden ramp up, and you know these companies having to deal with more than just alcohol beverages, <laughs> people are much more concerned about food than they are alcohol at this point. Um, it says that you know these companies will have to increase their capacity if this trend continues. It's going. It's right now on a huge spike. Sure, this is going to come down at some point, but the new normal may be that FedEx and UPS and the USPS have to change what they're doing, change their logistics, change their hiring practices in order to compensate for this heightened interest in online purchasing. So this is all very, very uh, fascinating information that's coming through. I think the last thing I want to touch upon, Robert, is that in the future, you know, the alcohol beverage industry is notoriously slow in making you know, changes, especially wine, even more so than with spirits and beers. But changes have already come into place. We've been seeing them for a long time, incrementally very slow, but there's been a huge trajectory increase in these. With, you know, for example, a couple of days ago, Kentucky opened up its direct shipping laws, Kentucky of all states. Um, you know, slow to respond, very conservative state, but they've made the big change. Several states have relaxed restrictions upon distilleries. I was researching a piece for uh, Distiller Magazine, Distilling, uh, distilling.com uh, uh, on, on the responses of these craft distilleries to the need for 70% plus alcohol for use in hand sanitizing fluids. There's been a remarkably and noble response by craft distillers all around the U.S. to meeting the needs of their communities and the first responders, people in nursing homes and such. And these craft distillers who aren't necessarily rich folks, a lot of them are doing it with no profit involved. They're working their, their asses off to do so. And so the responses that are being uh, implemented by these hardworking distillers, uh, as well as wineries trying to help out their communities, is that it's putting pressure on their governments to relax these laws. Hey, we're acting, we're acting as responsible, good citizens here. Please don't make it difficult for us to do our work. So we, I think there's going to be um, a long-term uh, uh, response in this, in that we're going to see a relaxation of restricted government alcohol laws. That's very that interesting. Yeah, I, no, I noticed that uh, you know here in Florida that uh, they really uh, relaxed uh, those uh, situations for retail restaurants who are now able to uh, sell for takeout uh, cocktails, for instance. Uh, uh, wine by the bottle so you know they've really kind of made it easier on the consumer to be able to get the product they want absolutely there and then you know just to kind of sum it up here robert uh, is that you know looking looking ahead uh people in the wine trade and, the, and wine consumers should keep an open mind 